Hello friends, welcome to Shankar IAS Daily Newspaper Analysis. Today's date is 14-6-2024. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are about to discuss today. So without much delay, let's get started. Let us start our discussion with our previous year question analysis. Look at this previous year prelims question. Which of the following is a very significant aspect of Champaran Satyagraha? Option A. Active all Indian participation of lawyers, students and women in the national movement. Option B. Active involvement of Dalit, tribal communities of India in the national movement. Option C. Joining of peasant unrest to India's national movement. Option D. Drastic decrease in the cultivation of plantation crops and commercial crops. See the correct answer to this question is option C. Joining of peasant unrest to the India's national movement. As Champaran Satyagraha was one of the significant event in the India's struggle for independence from the British colonial rule. Let's now move on to see in brief about Champaran Satyagraha. The Champaran Satyagraha was a non-violent resistance movement led by Mahatma Gandhi in 1970 in Champaran district of Bihar, India against the forced cultivation of indigo by the British landlords. This is one of the first movement by Gandhi in India, which later became a significant catalyst for India's freedom struggle. Gandhi's involvement in the Champaran Satyagraha saw the peasants' plight being highlighted on the national level, leading to a widespread support for the movement across the country. The success of the movement also inspired other regions to join Indian national movement, leading to upsurge of peasant unrest and mass mobilization of Indian masses. The Champaran Satyagraha marked a significant milestone in India's struggle for independence as it highlighted the importance of non-violent resistance and mass mobilization in achieving the goals of self-rule. It also saw the emergence of Gandhiji as a national leader and the subsequent adoption of his philosophy of Satyagraha as a means to attain freedom. In conclusion, the joining of peasant unrest to India's national movement was very significant aspect of the Champaran Satyagraha, which in fact played a crucial role in India's struggle for independence. With this, let's move to the next question. Look at this question. Which of the following are included in the capital budget of the government of India? Expenditure on the acquisition of assets like roads, buildings, machinery, etc. Loans received from the foreign governments. Loans and advances granted to the states and union territories. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. Option A, 1 only. Option B, 2 and 3 only. Option C, 1 and 3 only. Option D, 1, 2 and 3. C, it refers to an account of assets and liabilities of the government that includes capital receipts and capital expenditure. A capital account is an account that includes capital receipts and the payment. It basically includes assets as well as liabilities of the government. While the capital receipts comprise of loan or capital that are raised by the governments by different means, capital expenditure funds allocated for the long-term investment in the infrastructure, public facility and other assets that provide benefits to the public over the extended period of time. The capital expenditure components example include spending on the acquisition of land, building, machinery and the equipments, the construction of assets like highways and hospitals, the repayment of central government borrowing, loans and advances to the state and union territory administration and so on. Hence the statement 1 and 3 are correct. The capital receipt component includes loan borrowing, disinvestment funds, issuance of shares or debentures etc. Hence the statement 2 is correct. So the correct answer for this question is option C 1, 2 and 3. With this let's move to our daily newspaper analysis. Look at this news article. Recently, Hasibola Group has launched rocket and drone attacks on several Israeli army bases and positions following the killing of one of its senior commanders by the Israeli strike. Simultaneously, Israeli helicopters conducted strikes in Gaza's Rafah with reports of street battles between Hamas militants and Israeli troops. Despite international concerns over the situation of displaced people in Rafah, Israeli ground forces continued operation against Hama fighters in the area. This is the crux of this article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through the historical reasons for Israel-Palestine issue using our main answer writing approach. Let me read out the questions for you. Examine how the World War I and II were influential in shaping Israeli-Palestine conflict. This question can be asked in GS Paper 2 under the topic of effect of policies and politics of development 
and developing countries on India's interest and Indian diaspora. This is a pretty straightforward question. Here we have to address two important things. Firstly, we have to write about the events that happened around World War I that influenced the Israel-Palestine conflict. Then we have to write about the events that happened around World War II that influenced this conflict. Let us start with the introduction. See in the introduction part, you can write about the Israel-Palestine conflict in brief. Israel-Palestine conflict is a long-standing complex dispute around present-day Israel, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. You can also mention the issue is primarily centered around the land, religion and national identity. It involves competing claims for the same territory. Finally, you can also mention that Israel-Palestine conflict has led to frequent tensions and violence. Now, having done with the introduction part, let us move to the main body of this answer. Here, firstly, we must write about various events that happened around World War I that actually influenced this conflict. In this, you can mention about the collapse of Ottoman Empire. Before the World War I, Palestine was under the control of Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire fought alongside the German Empire during the war. Even before the end of the war, the defeat of Ottoman Emperor was very evident. So France and England signed a secret treaty. The Skies Picot Agreement of 1916 was secretly signed between Britain and France during World War I. This agreement planned the division of Ottoman Emperor territories in the Middle East zones into the zone of influence. It aimed to split the control over the region after the war, disregarding the local sentiments. This contributed to the arbitrary drawing of borders. This agreement sowed the seeds for the volatility in the Middle East. Then you can mention about Balfour Declaration of 1917. The Balfour Declaration was issued by the British government. The declaration expressed support for the establishment of national homeland for the Jewish people in Palestine. This declaration laid the groundwork for the eventual establishment of Israel and encourage Jewish immigration to Palestine. This in turn intensified the tensions between Jewish and Arab communities in the region. Then in 1918, World War I came to an end and as expected, the Ottoman Emperor collapsed. The erstwhile League of Nations entrusted Britain with the administration of Palestine, which included present-day Israel, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The British mandate facilitated Jewish immigration to the Palestine, leading to demographic changes and increased the friction between Jewish and Arab communities. These are some of the events that happened around World War I that influenced the Israel-Palestine conflict, which you can use in your answer. For the second part of this question, you have to write about various incidents that happened around World War II that influenced this conflict. Firstly, you have to write about the Holocaust. During the Holocaust, 6 million Jews were systematically murdered by the Nazi Germany. This led to Jewish immigration to Palestine. In addition to this, the Holocaust created a global sympathy towards the Jewish people and the people recognized the need of Jewish homeland. Then you can mention about the rise of Zionism. The Holocaust also resulted in creation of extremist group among the Jewish community. These Zionists organized themselves as a paramilitary groups and started fighting with the Arabs in Palestine for the establishment of Jewish homeland. Then you can mention about the Peel Commission of 1937. Due to the increasing Jewish immigration and the rise of Zionism, resistance erupted in Palestine. The resistance slowly developed into Arab revolt. Responding to the Arab revolt, the British government established the Peel Commission to investigate the causes and propose solutions. The commission recommended the partition of Palestine into separate Jewish and Arab states. This is the first time the two-state solution was proposed. After the World War II, UN was created. The tensions were still simmering in the Palestine region. So in 1947, the UN again proposed a two-state solution. This is also called as the UN Partition Plan. This plan aimed to divide the territory into Jewish and Arab states with Jerusalem as an international city. While Jewish leaders accepted the plan, the Arab leaders rejected it. In 1948, Israel declared its independence. In response, the Arab nations, including Jordan, Egypt, Syria and Iraq, launched a war against Israel to support Palestinian Arabs. This conflict resulted in the displacement of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians. This war also marked the beginning of the series of wars and conflicts between Israel and its neighbors. In this 1948 war, Israel won and occupied more territories from the surrounding regions. These are some of the points you can write to address the second part of the body. Now, having done with the body of the answer, we can take up the conclusion part. See, in the conclusion part, you can mention that violence begets violence. You can also mention that 
to bring a lasting peace in the region all the parties to the conflict should be brought to the negotiation table and only through the talks can the details for the peaceful coexistence can be ironed out the un partition plan can also be explored so that's all for this answer with this let's move to our next discussion in our analysis today we are going to analyze about climate change and the poly crisis see the word climate poly crisis was made popular by the historian adam tooze he said that this will be the future challenge for the countries around the world so what does it mean see it means that the various interconnectedness and the compounding crisis of climate change the word interconnectedness means it will affect the planet not just in few sectors like agriculture food production but also across various domains like urban governance monetary policy political coops etc and the word compounding means one sector will reinforce the impact on the other sector and vice versa so let us see them in detail in our analysis in addition to this we shall also see about various steps taken for combating the climate change impacts and also it can be done by our regular mains answer writing approach so before getting into the discussion let us look into the syllabus it comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of conservation environmental pollution and degradation and environmental impact assessment now let us start the discussion look at this question the climate change is a poly crisis that is affecting various sectors and domains in the light of above statement analyze the effects of climate change on various sectors and list out the solutions to tackle the climate change in an efficient manner the keyword here is analyze now our response for this type of question is very simple we just have to break an issue into various parts and explain how these relate to one another in the end we have to present them as one summary now coming to this question the statement in the question says the climate change is a poly crisis affecting various sectors and domains so in the introduction part we have to write some basic points about climate change and poly crisis if you are having any data and reports regarding the poly crisis like global risk report you can mention them the main body of the answer can be split into two parts in the first part you can write some points regarding the impacts of climate change on various sectors and in the second part you can write some of the suggestions and then in the conclusion part you can talk about the steps that are already taken in this regard you can also suggest a good way forward this is how you are going to approach this question so let us start with our introduction the climate change refers to long term change in the temperature and the weather patterns of the world though it can be natural like the change in the sun's activity or a large volcanic eruption but our concern is regarding the anthropogenic induced climate change why because these are the main drivers of climate change moreover poly crisis deals with the various interconnectedness and the compounding issues due to the climate change note that it will impact various sectors and domains ranging from physical social economical and political challenges etc in this discussion we are going to see the symbiotic relationship between the two see this is how you can start the introduction or else you can also try like this The World Economic Forum's Global Risk Report 2023 states that failure to mitigate climate change and failure of climate change adaptation are the two most severe risks of the world in the next decade. They are followed by the natural disasters and the extreme weather events and the biodiversity loss and ecosystem collapse. A close look at these four risks they clearly indicate that they are closely interrelated to each other and mutually reinforce one another. This is an example of climate induced poly crisis which are going to see in this analysis. Now having done with the introduction part we can move to the body part. See the first part of body should answer the impacts of climate change. First one is the climate change and health. According to WHO report climate change affects social and environmental determinants of health like clean air, safe drinking water, sufficient food and secure shelter etc. Moreover its data shows that Between 2030 and 2050 climate change is expected to cause approximately 250000 additional deaths per year from malnutrition malaria diarrhea and heat stress WHO also estimated that the direct damage cost to health is to be between 2 to 4 billion US dollars per year by 2030 as we know that climate change will increase the risk of health infection increase zoonotic disease like covid-19 etc this will pose a huge risk to the global health architecture particularly for the developing countries like india secondly the climate change and agriculture we know that agriculture sector employs a significant portion of indian population that is almost 50 percentage they are particularly susceptible to climate change the extreme events like drought floods and pest infestation will hamper the crop yields resulting in the loss of farmers income and may lead to farmer suicide 
मोर ओवर इंडिया अग्रिकलचर इज लार्जली रेन फेड इन नेचर क्लाइमेट चेंज इंड्यूस्ड इेगुलाटी लाइक एल नो चेंज इन रेलफॉल पैटर्न चेंज इन सी सर्फेस टेम्परेचर विल अफेक्ट दि मानसून ऑफ इंडिया विच इज अवर लाइफ लाइन नोट दैट क्लाइमेट चेंज विल पोज ए सीरियस थ्रेड टू फूड सेक्यूरिटी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड नाउ थर्डली the climate change and inflation it may look new but climate change is increasingly affecting macroeconomic policies of the country let us see how erratic monsoons extreme weather events and the rising temperature have disrupted agricultural productivity which leads to supply chain shocks and subsequent inflationary pressures see the wholesale price index and the consumer price index will increase due to the climate induced supply constraints in the recent years particularly in food prices for example Inflation in the onion prices shot up 327 percentage in December 2020 due to unseasonal rains and also the tomato prices which went over 168 percentage in June 2022 due to heat wave and cyclone led crop damages the inflationary impact of these disruptions will reflect in entire economy it will affect the cost of living and the disposable income of the household the rbi has estimated that up to 4.5 percentage of india's gdp could be at risk by 2030 owing to the loss of labor hour due to extreme heat and humidity fourthly the climate change and infrastructure see the physical infrastructure includes bridges roads ports electrical grids broadband internet and the communication system they are capital investment which often play a vital role in country's development but extreme weather events like heavy rain floods snow or temperature change can destroy the existing structures and facilities for example nearly 40% of united state population lives in coastal area it means millions of people will be impacted by the sea level rise billion worth of properties and human life are under risk of destruction fifthly the climate change and the poverty and migration the climate change increases the factors that leads to poverty the event like urban flood will damage the slum destroy homes and livelihood extreme heat wave make it difficult to work in outdoor jobs which are mostly done by the poor un hcr data over the past decade that is 2010 to 2019 states that weather related events displaced an estimated 23.1 million people on an average each year leaving many more vulnerable to poverty nextly let us see the impacts of climate change on the vulnerable sections see according to the children climate risk index of unicef globally one in seven children are exposed to the minimum five major climate and environmental hazards annually in 2020 nearly 10 million children were displaced due to extreme weather events the ifpri report estimates that climate change could lead to an additional 1.2 million standard children by 2050 girls are expected to be disproportionately affected due to gender disparities in access to food healthcare and education the extreme heat increases the incidence of stillbirth it also worsens the maternal and neonatal outcomes all these points may do justice to our first part of the answer let us see the next part that is the steps to address climate change firstly we can make use of a national carbon accounting system that is nce see it means an accounting that is used to account various carbon emissions in our day to day activities it will bring the entire nation starting from individuals households under one carbon accounting framework this process will account all human and non human activities in the world and their carbon emission by doing this we can truly internalize carbon reduction goals of the country and the world a carbon tax returns in addition to our income tax returns can be a game changer because it will lead to a revolution in the public finance and the government can incentivize to reduce the emission with tax breaks etc second one is following one health approach a new approach that recognizes the health of the people is closely connected to the health of the animals and environment if one parameter in this triangle is affected it will affect the other two through zoonotic diseases in understanding this fao who World Organization for Animal Health signed a tripartite agreement to develop a joint strategic framework to implement one health approach. Thirdly, increased collaboration of the countries is essential to combat climate change. See a rising concern in the recent time as warned by UN is climate apartheid where the rich countries pay to escape rising heating, hunger and conflict while the rest of the world is left to suffer. This should be addressed comprehensively. and the developed countries should fulfill the commitment of 100 billion a year to fight 
climate change. The steps taken by India like International Solar Alliance, Mission LIFE, a global mass movement which aims to nudge individuals and collective actions to protect and preserve the environment should be taken as a model program around the world. This can be our second part of the answer. Now moving on to the conclusion part, we can write like Scientific evidence of climate change is clear. It is a reality and we should fight it. The impacts of climate change is a threat to human well-being and the health of the planet. As given in the recent report of IPCC, any further delay in the concentrated global action will miss the brief, rapidly closing window to secure a livable future for our next generation. That's all about this article. With this, let's move to our next discussion. Look at this article. The first fast track court or the Pokso court has issued arrest warrant against former Chief Minister B.S. Edurappa. He is accused of sexually assaulting a 17-year-old girl. This is the news given here. In our discussion, we shall understand about the features of Pokso Act and also the issues associated with it. Firstly, let us see briefly about Pokso Act 2012. The Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act 2012 or the Pokso Act it is a comprehensive law enacted to protect children that is person below 18 years of age from sexual abuse sexual harassment and pornography in india the child sexual abuse was covered under ipc section 375 354 and 377 the major drawbacks with respect to these provisions are that they did not specifically protect children from sexual abuse but generally cover about the rape and unnatural sex other than this they did not protect the male children from the sexual abuse also some of the terms used in this section such as modesty and unnatural offence are not defined in the code so because of these reasons pokso act was enacted the sole aim of the act is to address the offences of sexual exploitation and sexual abuse of children now with this information let us see the significant features of this act firstly there is a general neutral provision see the pokso act does not create any distinction between the victim and the perpetrators on the basis of their gender as per the act the definition of the child includes anyone below 18 years of age the court have even convicted women for engaging in the child sexual abuse incidents this is a significant stride because the data says that in chatisgarh male child victims accounted for about 8 in every 1000 pokso cases that is 0.8 percentage secondly there is a sufficient general awareness among the public to report cases of sexual exploitation of children this is because of the provision of mandatory reporting of sexual abuse cases there is no and non reporting has been made a specific offence under pokso act this is also one of the most significant feature of this act thirdly as per the act storage of any child pornography material has been made a new offence fourthly the offence of sexual assault has been defined in explicit terms this is significant because no clear definition has been given in the indian penal code see these are some significant provisions of the act now let us see about some issues associated with it firstly there is no change in investigation process see the investigation under pokso act still follows code of criminal procedure that is crpc common steps including recording the victim statement medical examination forensic analysis and age determination secondly there was inadequate number of women officers the pokso act requires a woman sub inspector to record the child child statement only 10 percentage of the police force are women and many stations lack women staff fourthly the lack of infrastructure there is a provision for recording statements using audio video means lack of infrastructure makes it difficult to ensure the integrity of electronic evidences also there is no cross examination of judicial magistrates statements of the child are recorded by the judicial magistrates and also the judicial magistrates are not available for cross examination during the trials questioning the necessity of this provision in addition to this there is a lack of forensic science laboratory upgrades many states have not upgraded the forensic science laboratory charge sheets are sometimes filed without forensic reports so it is the time to review the way of implementation of pokso act this will help in identifying how the act has helped the victims of sexual exploitation and what more needs to be done to ensure justice so that's all about this article with this let's move on to our next topic for our discussion look at this article it states that the true net platform developed by goa based company molbio is a rapid molecular test for diagnosing 
pulmonary, extrapulmonary, and rifampicin resistant tuberculosis. It was prized at 77th World Health Assembly in Geneva for its effectiveness in combating TB and its potential in global healthcare. Launched in 2017, TrueNAT is a portable, battery operated, real time quantitative micro PCR system that delivers result in less than an hour. It can be used in labs, health centers, and in the field and can test to over 40 diseases. In this context, let us discuss about tuberculosis and various steps taken by Indian government regarding it. Now, let us start with the basics of tuberculosis. See, tuberculosis or TB is an infectious disease caused by a bacterium called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is usually attacks the lungs, but it can also attack other parts of the body such as kidneys, spine and brain. Know that not everyone infected with TB bacteria becomes sick. See, there are two types of TB condition such as latent TB infection and the TB disease that is the active TB. In the case of latent TB infection, the TB germs live in the human body but does not make the people sick. Whereas in the case of TB disease, the person gets sick from the TB germs. These are some of the basics about TB. Now moving forward, let us see some important steps taken by Indian government to combat tuberculosis. First, we have a national strategic plan for tuberculosis elimination. The national strategic plan for tuberculosis elimination was launched in the year 2017. The goal of the plan is to achieve a rapid decline in the TB related death and also to eliminate TB from India by 2025. It adopts strategies under four groups, deduct, treat, prevent and build. Then there is Nikshai Mitra initiative. Actually, Nikshai Mitra is a portal for donors to provide various forms of support to those undergoing TB treatment. The donors through this portal can provide nutritional, diagnostic and vocational support. Anyone suffering from TB in India can register their details in the said portal and ask for help. Then there is Pradhan Mantri TB Mukt Bharat Abhyan. See, this is an initiative of Ministry of Health, Family and Welfare. Under this initiative, additional patient support is given by bringing in all the stakeholders. The government also plans to use corporate social responsibility that is CSR activities to extend support to patients. The ministry also conducts national TB prevalence survey. The survey is conducted to assess the actual disease burden at the national level. Through the survey, the ministry also assess the amount of expenditure incurred by the TB patients on the treatment. These data help the government form better policies. Then there is TB Hariga Desh Jitega campaign. Its main aim is to increase the reach of TB care service in our country. Through this campaign, the government also aims to spread disease awareness about TB and encourage people with TB symptoms to seek medical attention and remain adherent to the treatment. These are the initiatives of the central government regarding this. Now let us see about World Health Assembly. The World Health Assembly is the decision-making body of the World Health Organization. It includes representatives from all the 194 WHO member states and meets annually in Geneva. The World Health Assembly sets the global health policies, appoint the World Health Organization Director General, approves the budget and makes key decisions on health issues. It addresses topics like infectious diseases, health system and emergency responses and adopts international health regulation and standards to guide the member states. That's all about the newspaper article discussion for today. With this, let's move to our next section that is daily practice questions. Look at this question. Consider the following statements regarding POXO Act. Statement 1. The investigating officer have to ensure that child does not comes in contact with the accused during the examination. Statement 2. Investigation and trials under this act will be conducted in a child-friendly manner. Which one of the following statement is correct? Option A. Both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1. Option B. Both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1. Option C. Statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect. Option D. Statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is correct. The correct answer for this question is option B. Both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and the statement 2 is not the correct explanation for the statement 1. 
See the statement 1. From our discussion, we knew that this statement is correct. And with respect to statement 2, this statement is also correct, but it is not actually the clear explanation for the statement 1. So, our correct answer is option B, as mentioned before. Now, moving on to the next question. With reference to tuberculosis in India, consider the following statements. India has the highest tuberculosis affected population in the world. India has launched Nikshai Portal Yojana, a direct benefit transfer scheme for helping TB patients. Which of the statements given above are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. The correct answer to this question is option C, both one and two. See, the scheme provides rupees 500 per month as a nutritional support to each notified TB patients for a duration for which the patient is on anti-TB treatment. Incentives or delivered through direct benefit transfer scheme to bank accounts of the beneficiary. So, both the statements are correct. That's all for today's discussion. If you like this video, please hit like, share and subscribe. Thank you.